let's say if, for example, uh, you ask God to forgive you, but the family doesn't forgive you, will God forgive you? You've said that yourself, that Shirk won't be forgiven. Okay? Mm. So then how do you explain Shirk being forgiven in chapter 4, 153? How do you explain that same sin being forgiven? After Musa telling them, yeah, about the Torah, he bring it, yeah, more than 60,000 people, yeah, how they repented? They have to kill themselves. So this is just, God says, kill yourselves, then I'll forgive you. Yeah, so, the, so the only way to be forgiven is to commit suicide. Me, what I'm saying is this, these two attributes that contradict each other in Islam, they do not contradict each other in, in Christianity, because they are both kept at the cross. No, it counts, because my heart, my heart might be greedy. My heart might say, my heart might say that I, I want to give 10 pounds, but Allah requires me to give more. His standard is that I give more money, but my heart only wants to give 10 pounds. But in my mind, because I gave 10 pounds, I will feel that I've done a good deed, right? Yeah. Other people will say, oh, she did a good deed, but Allah is not happy, because Allah wants more. So how do I know how much Allah wants from me? That's what I'm trying to ask you. Okay. There is, there is, there is type of charity. There's, there's different type of charity. There's, 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 there's type of, there's type of charity. God can bless you with it. They call zakah. Example, like you go like two million, one million pound. I give you. Yeah. God, you got present from that one million pound. God could present it to give you charity. If you don't have a one million pound, example, you got one thousand pound in your pocket. Yeah. So if you go to the road, you can give you one P or to a twenty P or, or, or one pound to the people. That's a different charity. That's God. God doesn't require it to you. You have to give you more to bless God. No. So how much? All the certain money to give to bless God. Well, how much? Which one? The, the, the one I'm telling. The one how million much? pound. How much? We give one million pound. He says to give one million pound. Allah. No, if you got one million pound. Yes. From that million pound, one million pound, twenty percent or 25% from that 1 million pound, that is a charity for God, you must give it. If you don't give it, yeah, that's you disobey Allah. But if I did give you it, disobey. That, if, I, if I gave it, is that good thing? If you give it, what Allah required to how much percent from this 1 million pound given, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. What if in my heart I'm not happy to give? If you're not happy to give, if you're not happy to give, even you're giving, yeah? You're not happy to give him, but if you give him, God doesn't write for you is a good word. No, but how do, you know, how do you know that? This is because I know, you don't know, God mentioned it. You don't know his moral standard. How do you know but that? But God mentioned it. Because you keep doing the good deeds, the good deeds, the good deeds, but, but you don't good, know where to you, end. You keep doing the good deeds, and you're not happy. Can I say something? So the conversation is basically salvation in both faiths, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you, do you believe that according... Sorry to interrupt. No, sorry. no, please. Do, do you not. believe that according to Islam, salvation is quite straightforward? It's quite clear cut and it's kind of like you do this, that and the other and then you are saved, yes? Yeah. Okay. Can I read to you from the Quran? Okay. So when I read the Quran, all due respect, when I read the Bible, I see the Bible has a very clear message of salvation. It's quite consistent, okay? When I read the Quran, if I was a Muslim, I would be concerned for my salvation because there are certain things that will leave you confused. For example, contradictory statements about salvation. Okay? In the Quran or in the Bible? In Quran. Okay? So in the Bible, I say it's quite straightforward. In the Quran, it's kind of muddy. Okay, and you don't, you can't really tell if you're going to be forgiven or not. Let me explain why. In Surah 4, verse 48. It says, indeed, Allah does not forgive association with him. That's shirk, yes? Mm -hmm. So Allah says the sin, of, the sin of shirk will not be forgiven, yes? Yeah. Okay. Whatever did you did it, will not forgiven. Okay, will not be forgiven. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's what it says. It says yeah. uh, shirk will not be forgiven. Okay? Shirk meaning you, you worshipping I know. Something worshiping, other without him. Worshipping something other than Allah is shirk and it won't be forgiven. Yeah, what, so you do you agree yeah, with that? Even you give all your house. That's fine. Allah okay, so forgive. whatever you do, it cannot be forgiven. Okay? Yeah. And it actually reiterates this later on in the same chapter. It says Allah forgives not that partners should be set up with him okay he forgives anything else okay but that he doesn't forgive all right but then there's a problem because that that what i've just read there is two separate verses in the same chapter okay this is the third verse in the very same chapter that contradicts what i've just told you okay and let me explain why this this makes sense uh, doesn't make sense from your point of view it does make sense with my point of view the way i look at muhammad okay so in in the same chapter four verse one five three it says the people of the scripture ask you to bring down to them a book from heaven but they had asked of Moses even greater than that and said show us Allah outright okay so the thunderbolt struck them for their wrongdoing then they took the car for worship so they worship something other than Allah which cannot be forgiven okay it cannot be forgiven can it yeah, yeah. okay it cannot be forgiven the problem is this very verse says 
and we pardoned that. So in one passage, in two places in the same chapter of the Quran, it says shirk will not be forgiven. Okay, mm -hmm. and then later on in the very same chapter, mm -hmm. it says shirk will be forgiven. So I'm asking you this here, and this this is the way I look at this. Okay, if this is from God, there should be no contradiction like this, in, okay. especially in terms of salvation. Okay, mm -hmm. but if this is coming from the mind of a man who's having this revelation given to him bit by bit by bit, it would make perfect sense that at some point he's going to contradict himself. Okay, mm -hmm. now it's not only there that does this. Let me just finish my point. In chapter two. It says that the Jews, the Christians, and the Saviors does not they don't have anything to worry about in the last day. Okay? But then in the very next chapter, it says if anyone desires a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted. So according to your own Quran, in the same chapter, a certain sin will not be forgiven. Then that same sin is forgiven. Okay? And then you have Jews, Christians and Sabians having absolutely nothing to worry about. And then the next chapter contradicts that. So I'm putting forward to you that this makes sense if it comes from the mind of a man, not from the mind of God. Okay. I'll, let you, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. First of all, Allah doesn't forgive anyone who worship other than him. According to that? Yeah, doesn't forgive him. Allah doesn't forgive anyone who worship something else rather than him. That's one one. Thing. If you worship one God, doesn't have a son, doesn't have a brother, doesn't have a uh, whatever daughter, whatever it is, doesn't dream, doesn't sleep, worship one, he's a creator, he's created everything under him, and you believe that on your heart, and you pray what he said to pray for him, whatever you did it, God forgive you. So even though One minute, whatever you did, if you kill someone, yeah, okay. If you kill someone, you're robbing, you do a lot of bad things, you sell and drugs, whatever you did it, God will forgive you when you come repent it to him. When you repent it, you tell him that you repent it to him and God please forgive me what I done it. Okay. But Satan met me to met me to do it. That's God forgive me. Okay, That's so one, I, I, I think one minute, one minute. And the second one. Yeah, the second one. You know, Moses. Moses, you killed someone. Yes. You killed someone from you kill someone. Yeah, can I he ran away. Okay, let me interject. One minute. He ran away. After when he ran away, God made him perfect, right? Uh -huh, okay. So he believed that God is one because if he doesn't believe that God is one, God is never gonna forgive him. Okay, then let me stop you there. Okay? So I agree with what you're saying. That you know it, it does say can you can stay. Okay. Okay. So I agree it does say, okay, that some sins will, that, that sin um, won't be forgiven. You said that yourself, that shirk won't be forgiven, okay? Mm. So then how do you explain shirk being forgiven in chapter four one five three? How do you explain that same sin being forgiven? Okay. Shirk forgiven, that's meaning when you left leave, when you left the, the shirk and you come back to God. But the previous verse that's, that's what it says. The no, no, the previous verse it says shirk won't be forgiven. It says the second it, one is shirk it, forgiven. It, it says any, what is the condition it, of the shirk it, forgiven? It, it, it says any other sin will be forgiven. So what is it? What is but, but what, listen, what does the chapter say? So let me ask let me just ask you this, okay? So you don't see that there's a contradiction when in two passages in the Quran when two passages in the Quran say it will be forgiven, but the one passage in the same chapter says it, 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 it sorry. Two places yeah, in the Quran yeah, it says forgiven. it won't be forgiven. One then two places says it, it in one place it says it will be forgiven. You don't see a contradiction there. And let me, let me explain to you why why I think that the Islamic concept of God also in terms of justice and mercy is is not is, is not from God. Let me let me explain to you why. For one, because we see contradictory statements in terms of salvation. So I would say, how can you trust a book that speaks about salvation when it contradicts itself about salvation? Okay. So let me give you, let me give you the Christian concept. Okay. We believe that God is both just and merciful. Okay. So it, so if God is both just and merciful, God will have to punish sin. He will have to deal with sin. Okay. But if God is also merciful, He will want to show His mercy. Okay. Now I would say in the Islamic concept of God, all, all due respects, okay, in the Islamic concept of God, you don't, you can't say God is both just and merciful. You can say He's uh, merciful because He just forgives sin, but we've just established his, his forgiveness is actually arbitrary. Sometimes He forgives a sin, sometimes He doesn't. Okay, but I would say you cannot say He's just and merciful because simply sweeping sin un under the rug and not dealing with it is is not at all uh, just. Okay, because let me put this, let me put to you like this. Let's say I've committed loads of crimes, and God forbid I end up in a courtroom, okay? And the judge says to me, uh, no, Mr. Bill, Ben, you've done this, you've committed these crimes, I'm going to punish you. And I say, judge, I know I've committed these crimes, okay, I'm sorry, and I'm never going to do it again. Imagine if the judge turns around and says to me, Ben, that's fine, I accept that, leave, you're fine to go. That judge would be unjust, because he's not fulfilling his, 
uh, role as a judge in condemning in condemning sin, okay? Now I would say in Islam, that's your judge. You have a judge that doesn't fully deal with sin. My, my judge is this, okay? Let's imagine we're in that same courtroom, okay? And I'm standing before the judge. And I say to the judge, I'm very sorry for my sin, uh, you know, this, that and the other. And the judge says, Ben, you stand condemned. Now let's imagine someone bursts through the courtroom doors, they kick open the doors, and they say, and they say, judge, I will pay this man's fine on behalf of him because I love him. The judge can legally set me free, okay, because somebody else has paid my fine in my place. But even with that analogy, it doesn't go far enough because that same individual also would have sins in the eyes of God. So his sin would also need to be paid for, okay? Now let's imagine the judge himself, because my, my presupposition is Jesus is God, and the Bible says that all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ, okay? Now let's imagine I'm still standing before that same judge. But instead of somebody bursting open the courtroom door and paying my fine for me, let's imagine the very judge himself stands up, puts down the hammer, takes off his judge's robe and says, I will pay for your sin because I love you. Okay, that's what we say Jesus done. So we say in Jesus, on the cross, is where God's justice and mercy meet without any contradiction or without any overlap. Because at the cross, in Christ, God dealt with sin. Okay? But at also at Christ, on the cross, we can obtain mercy by looking to what was done on the cross and receiving Christ as Saviour. So at the cross is where two of these attributes that would contradict in Islam, they do not contradict in Christianity. Hand over to you. Okay. There's one thing. Example, you gave it to me for the, for the court. Court, whatever, it's going to forgive you or not. You can't not compare court, yeah, judging and forgiving you and, and God. Is God a judge? God, God judge, judge is this two different things. But is God a judge? But you made a mistake. Go ahead. You made a mistake, God. The judge is forgive you. But how about the family? So that, that so now yeah, I guess I'll give you like, how about the family? You kill someone, okay. How about the family? Family won't forgive you. The judge here can forgive you, but the family never gonna forgive you. So if the family doesn't forgive you, no matter God forgiving you, both won't accept it. God doesn't accept it. Only one condition can God accept it for judge forgiving you, yeah? And and, and the family accept it. Yeah, that's only God can forgive you. Okay, so but God forgive you, but the family doesn't forgive you. Okay, that that, that, okay, that, so that doesn't mean that you will forgive okay, him. So if you from God. Okay, so if you commit a crime against, a, if, let's say you have a fight with your neighbour, you hit him, he dies. Okay, if let's say if for example uh, you ask God to forgive you, but the family doesn't forgive you, will God forgive you? If the family doesn't forgive you, will, will God then forgive you? Of course. Using your own analogy. Okay, of course. Because okay, so if of course. One minute. No, one second. One minute. Because if, if if God will forgive you, regardless. Of the forgiveness of the family. But, but woman, then my, it depends my, the condition. Then my courtroom analogy depends. is perfectly fine. Okay, no, no, because this, everything is up to God. You have to come from the first, and then you have to come down. Because from prime minister, you have to come to the MP, right? So, example. Let me give you an example. You punch, you kill, uh, you kill, or you punch someone. Like Moses did it, he killed someone. Because the way he believed in God, the way he believed in God, yeah, he killed someone and ran away. He worshiped one God. Doesn't pressure to any other 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 thing. Only worship one God. He asked forgiveness for God, and then God, God forgive him. So who create the person is a God, right? Who is the punishing? I don't think I'm following you. Sorry. Because um, let, let me let me just let me reiterate. Okay, example. Okay, the, the family. Okay, the family doesn't forgive no, you. No, 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 and no, 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 one second. Okay, one second. Right. We we are talking okay about God. We're not talking about the family who the sin may have been committed against. We are talking about God as a judge because we both agree God is the judge of the universe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, one, one second. Okay. okay. I, I, I'm making sure. No, one, one, no, let me just reiterate. Okay. Yeah. So if God is the judge, we both agree God is the judge of the, of the universe. God judges the living and the dead. Yes. So if God judges, okay. What I'm saying is this: these two attributes that contradict each other in Islam, they do not contradict each other in, in Christianity because they are both kept at the cross. God's justice and mercy are both shown at the cross. In Islam, you don't have that. You have an arbitrary God who sometimes forgives sins, sometimes doesn't forgive sins. Ultimately, doesn't make forgiveness clear because, like I've showed you earlier, shirk won't be forgiven. Then it actually is forgiven. Christians, Jews, and Sabians have nothing to worry about. Where's, where's, then they where do have saying, something to worry about. What is saying in the in the verb saying that God will give you shirk? That he won't forgive it. What is he saying? Okay. He's saying give for. He's gonna give forgive uh, shirk. Okay. Surah 4, I'll read it one more time for you, okay? He said that doesn't give shirk, forgiven. Surah 4, Surah 4, yeah. 48. Indeed, Allah does not forgive association with him. That's it. So he doesn't forgive it. He doesn't forgive okay. any, any shirk. Okay, so he doesn't forgive 
So shirk is worshipping something other than Allah, yes? That's it, yeah. Okay, so, okay. so then why does he forgive it in Surah 4153? What is giving? What, what, what does he okay. they worship, giving? Okay, they worship the golden calf. They wor giving shirk? They're worshipping something other than Allah, which is shirk. But then it says, and we forgave that. Okay, did they repent it or not? Hold on, hold on, hold on. It doesn't matter if they repented. No, it doesn't the, matter. The verses before says it won't be forgiven. No. If you actually read Surah 4, uh, verse 84, okay, it says he forgives anything else, but not that. Okay. But this one, because you, you, you're cutting it now. Because you're cutting it, the verse. Would you like to read the whole thing? No, 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 you're cutting the verse now. Because the verse for giving for shirk, how is God is going to give them for shirk like this? Example, somebody worship three. Huh? God is going to forgive him. Shirk. Okay, let me ask you this. One minute. He's not going to give you for shirk. This is shirk. He's not going to forgive you. So how are you telling me God is some one place saying forgiving for shirk and one place is, is telling me that, that doesn't give that's for what shirk. I'm asking you. Minute. That's what but I'm asking you to you. answer but I, that's what your Quran says. It's, it's not me stating it. Your Quran says that. Okay, my Quran is doesn't... My Quran, the one you're saying is something missing because because it's, because it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's true okay. Quran... Do you have a Quran on you? It, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. If you are... Uh, because you, you're telling me Quran saying it. That's not true. What so, that's, are you saying? so what I'm reading is no, a fake. No, no, no. So that's a fake Quran. No, no, because I don't know if it's a Quran or not. Because you didn't, I didn't see okay, it. Okay, okay. We can solve this. Because do, do you have a Quran on you right now? Listen to me. I don't have a Quran with me. Do you have a but, phone? Listen to me. But God is forgiving for shirk. So, so to, you know shirk, yeah? Forgiving. And one is doesn't forgive. One is doesn't forgive is God is shirk. Meaning, you keep worshipping something else with God and until you die God never gonna does, forgive does the verse say that's one, one, does the verse one, say that's one does the verse say that okay that's one condition the second one is saying forgiving there's somebody keep worshipping tree or car whatever it is and he realized that he doing something wrong and he come back to God and he repented huh? and he repented when he repented one minute when he repented from yeah what he doing when he worshipping something else rather than God he come back to God and he asked for God, please forgive me. I did something big mistake. I worship something else rather than you. Please forgive me. That's forgiven. But, can you but if he didn't say that, and he keep worshiping something else, God doesn't forgive. What is it? What okay, is it? But, but can you read it for me? Can you show me that in the Quran? Re read because, it for me. Okay, I, I've read it to you twice. No, 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 no. Okay. Because I'm, I'm not talking about doesn't forgive him for shirk one. I'm talking about giving. Give him for shit one, show me. No, 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 see, what you're doing is, you're setting, you're moving, now let me finish, you're moving the goalpost, you're saying, don't give me the one where he does forgive it, give me the one where he doesn't forgive it, okay? And I'm saying, no, they go, they're in the very same chapter. They, one already. second, they are in the same surah. But that's not one, one, one second, if, if your message from the Quran is a clear-cut message about salvation, then we shouldn't find such contradictions like that. If, for example, okay, let me, let me say this to you, okay? If I said to you, if you punch me in the face, yeah, one second. If you punch me in the face, I'm never going to forgive you, okay? And then you punch me in the face and then I forgive you. Have I, have I contradicted myself? I have. Okay, yeah, okay, so you agree I've contradicted myself. So why is it a contradiction when I say it, but when the Quran does that, that's, that's no longer a contradiction? No, the Quran doesn't say that. It doesn't, okay. It doesn't say that. Okay, then you're not going to trust my reading of the Quran. No. I encourage you, pull out your phone yeah. and look up the Quran passages yourself and you can read I'll, them to the I'll, camera I'll, right I'll, now. I don't have it now. But uh, I can bring Quran from any Muslim person, yeah? I can bring any Quran, rather. It's a simple thing. Okay, how about this? We go on Google, Quran, yes? No, listen to this. Let me, let me explain to you one, one condition first. So now you don't want to go to the Quran? No, we go to the Quran. I don't, I don't mind. Go to the Quran. But I want to explain to you that the shirk, the one forgiven, yeah? Is it keep doing the shirk until he die? But it doesn't say that. Is, is it saying that? Does it say that? Okay, if it doesn't say that, it doesn't forgive. So that's, it doesn't okay, mean it's not... If it doesn't say that, he doesn't forgive, but he does forgive. You're contradicting the Quran. I'm not contradicting the Quran. I already explained to you. You're, you're, say, you're saying, okay, you're saying. I'm not contradicting the Quran. I already tell you the no, clear. You're, you're because if me. you worship one God, yeah, rather than rather than anything else, anything you do, you repent to God, God forgive you. But okay. if you worship something else, okay. whatever you do, whatever you repent, yeah, yeah, or you, you, whatever you do, God doesn't forgive you. Okay. Unless you repent, you come back to him. Okay, so in that, and then you okay. worship okay. Okay. only one, only okay. one God. Okay. And let's, ask for forgiveness, God forgive okay. you. Let's God go. doesn't forgive okay. you. Let's that go. is okay. wrong what you're saying. Okay, okay. How well, come God is forgive okay. you? Okay, if, okay. You're doing another okay. shirk. And not, how come you're telling me what you're saying? If you if you do if you don't do any any other things, 
God forgive me. Okay, so if it's wrong what I'm saying, then your Quran's wrong because I'm just simply no, reading. Not I'm wrong, just simply reading what's on no, your Quran. No. No, bring second, it out, bring it out. Let me read the Quran. I've read it up three times. I've read it to you. You don't accept it. That's on okay. you, not me. No, no, bring it out. Let me read the Quran. I have to read it. One second. One second. I have to read it. One second. But the sentence that I'm finished. Okay, then we can let the audience go away and look this up, and they can judge for themselves. Okay. So let me just say this. Let me just say this. Okay. If that's not okay. If if a contradiction isn't really a contradiction there, then what do you do about Surah two and Surah three? So why you stop there? Why don't you finish it? Stop Why don't you finish the sentence? The one who said, the one who said, God forgive you in shirk. That Why is, don't that, you finish that, it? That's the end of the verse. No, it's not. You have to carry on, carry on reading. Okay, let, let's just go to the doesn't say okay, that. Okay. How come God is going to forgive you? How come first he's saying, doesn't, God doesn't, doesn't give for someone who's making a shirk, doesn't forgive you? And other verses tell him, if you, if God I, forgive listen, you listen, somebody listen. doing shirk. I'm agreeing, on, I'm agreeing with you. you yeah. should, I'm, listen, I'm agreeing with you. You should have a problem with contradictions in your book. No, you should. I don't know. No. But you're not admitting There's it's no a contradiction. No. Okay, now listen to this. Is the true Quran doesn't listen, say okay, that. Okay, one second. Look, okay. But which Quran is? Uh, okay, there's so many Quran is in there. Okay, look, look. Shia book, which one is? Stop, stop, stop. This is Quran. Okay, look, 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 look. Sahih, Sahih International. Okay, the people of the Scripture ask you to bring down to them a book from heaven, but they had asked a Moses even greater than that, and said, and this is what I've been telling you from my phone. Okay, show us Allah outright. So the thunderbolt struck them for their wrongdoing. Then they took the calf for worship, and after clear evidences had come to them, we pardoned that and gave Moses clear authority. Where does it, where, where does it say any difference what I've just said? Okay. It doesn't. I know, I know that verse for the Moses, right? When the Moses went to the mountain and bring the Torah, yeah? He bring the Torah to the people and he left his brother behind. That's not what the One minute, that's about. the verse. I'm going to finish the verse because you didn't finish the verse. Because that's the, you're talking about the Musa, I know. Because the people that worship the cow, yeah? You're talking about the Musa, isn't it? The Torah, right? But that's why you, that's why you read it, right? That's what you read it. That's from your Quran. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm from my Quran. That's what you're reading. Yes, you said Torah. That's so, Quran. Yeah, it's to, yeah, Quran. Yeah, Quran is, is, is everything the Torah mentioned in the Quran. Not quite. Carry on. Okay, it is. Not quite. It, because, okay. because anyway, in the Quran, whatever Musa did, whatever Jesus did, is mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. So Moses went to the mountain. He wanted to bring. Sorry, one sorry. minute. Went to the mountain. He wanted to bring the Torah from book from God. God tell him to come and give you some Torah to go and then. Tell you people okay. to worship me. Okay, okay. Let me okay. Just... he left his brother behind. He left his brother behind. When he come back, he brought, he, when he come back, people to worship his cow. Someone called Musa Samrin, he make a cow. Yeah? And he go voice. And then he said to the people, Musa went to somewhere else. He lost. Yeah? He lost. He doesn't know his God. This is the God that you have to worship. He made the cow for them. And then when the Musas come, yeah, people to worship in the cow. And then he tell his brother, he hold his brother's head. He's saying, why you let these people to do these things? To worship something else. I left it behind. He said, my son of mother, leave my, my, my head. Yeah? Because I didn't let them to do this shirk. Because they forced me out. I couldn't do nothing. They're worshiping the cows. Yeah? After Musa telling them, yeah, about the Torah, he bring it, yeah, more than 60,000 people, yeah, to repent. To repent. How they repented? They have to kill themselves. They kill themselves. That's in Surah 2, yes. A couple of thousand, they kill That's themselves. So they kill themselves to be forgiven. One minute, yeah, forgiven, yeah, because it's... So, so, so one minute, to be forgiven, finish. you have to kill yourself. That's, that's them, them, them time. It's not our time. And is that a just God? Yeah, yeah, it's them time. That, that's God, a, that's a just God can God. do whatever so this, he wants. So this is just. God says, kill yourselves, then I'll forgive you. Yeah, so, that's, the, so the only way to be forgiven is to commit suicide. Let me, let me, let me tell you. No, that's, that's them time. Them time. That's the Musa's time. Yeah, everybody got different times. So suicide was okay One back minute. then. Let me, let me finish. That's them time. Our time now, you cannot kill yourself. Yeah? Before, before are, are you really One saying minute. this? One minute. Because it's in the sort of sign. You read it, you say. It's in the sort of sign, isn't it? Yes. But, so but if you are, are, you, are you really telling me? One minute. One minute. It's okay let to kill finish, yourself. Brother. That is the them time. God can change it anything he wants. So, he, so again, this shows his, his forgiveness is arbitrary. He will forgive you, My oh, friend. he will forgive you, then he won't forgive you, then he will forgive you if you commit suicide. That is different because every God is bringing every book different. I rest yeah? my case. Yeah, every God is bringing different books. Yeah, Torah is different. Yeah, Jesus book is different. Abraham book is different. Yeah, every prophet is a different book they got it. Yeah, so different book, yeah, in Musa's time, they tell him to kill themselves to repent for God. That's the punishment, okay? You, your words are mine. One minute, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what it says in the Quran, okay? And then, in our time now, in the Muhammad time, whatever you do, if you don't associate any shirk with Allah, 
Well, you will forgive your answer, Jake. Now you've, you've spoke for quite a while. Okay. Yeah. I think um, maybe we should wrap Does this. Does it make a sense for you? Not at all. No. It, okay, what what you? No. All you. Do all due respect. All you've done, and I didn't interrupt you then. So let me speak now. Okay. All you've done is confirm my belief that the forgiveness of God in the Quran is at its very core arbitrary, incoherent and contradictory. So you may have thought you was making a case for Islam, you actually made a case against Islam there, okay? You just proved to me that... No, no. Well, I didn't interrupt you. you. You just proved to me that the forgiveness in Islam is, quite frank, frankly, a mismatch and uh, not coherent in any sense of the word, okay? Now, I would like to pick you up on something else you said, because we're going nowhere with this contradiction thing. According to you, a contradiction isn't really a contradiction, okay? And suicide, to be forgiven, is actually okay, so I think we should just drop that at that point. But you also said um, everything that Jesus done was in the Quran. Okay, now I would like to challenge you on that because the Jesus, and let's bear in mind, the earliest accounts of the life of Christ are found in the New Testament, okay? The earliest accounts. When Jesus historians, okay, when you study Jesus as a historian, you don't go to the Quran. It was written 600 years after the fact. You go to the earliest accounts, which are in fact the Gospels and the Epistles, okay? And in those Epistles and in that Gospel, Jesus said himself in Matthew that he's going to be crucified. Okay, and he says in Luke chapter uh, 22, okay, that the, he will shed his blood for a new covenant. Now, none of that's found in the Quran. So you just said everything Jesus taught was in the Quran. I'm telling you the earliest accounts of Jesus are actually quite contradictory, once again, to the Quran. That's, that's, that's what you say. Let me answer for you. Yeah? Face camera, they can't hear Okay, let me, let me answer for you. Whatever Jesus says in the Quran, Jesus, he never say, I'm the son of God and worship me. Ah, but this is your presupposition. One minute. I want you to. I, I, yeah, I, I know. Please. Sorry. I, wa I want you to. I want you to question your presupposition because you're starting with the. You're starting with the viewpoint that the Quran is already correct. I'm asking you to take a step back, take off the Islamic lenses, look at history from a from a from an unbiased perspective. Okay? But the history in the Quran. The, what history are you talking about? One second. Let's look at the. Let's look at Jesus. Yeah? How do you know the history? One one how do you know? If how do you know Adam has been created? Listen, if we if we was to if we was to look okay at the life of Jesus. Yeah. Let's say me and you. I'm not a Christian. You're not a Muslim, we're just two guys studying about Jesus, yeah? Kish, is this still going, yeah? yeah How long has it got left? Uh, two minutes, two fifty. Okay, get ready to... Uh, yeah. So what I'm saying is this, if we're just two guys looking into the life of Jesus, okay, we would look at the earliest accounts, would you agree? You'd have to, okay? There's no point looking at something that comes... Which one? Which one? Which book? One second, one second. What, what, what one, life is the, the one, Jesus? One, one, life? one second, okay. But there's so one, many books one, now. One second, okay. Yeah? But we have, as I said earlier, we have to look Orthodox, at... Orthodox, how we many have, We have to look at the earliest, okay? The how er many books are there for the Christian? My friend, the earliest account of the life of Christ is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and the New Testament epistles, okay? So who read the New Testament? Okay, the disciples of Christ. Who the disciples of the Christ? Who wrote it? When, okay. when is coming? Okay. Why, why? Okay, okay, for example, the Gospel of John, okay? The Gospel of John, if you read chapter 21, it explicitly claims to be written by a disciple, okay? And I don't know if you read John, but in John chapter 21, it says that this is the disciple, okay? The one who was there, the disciple who Jesus loved, it says, okay? It says this is the disciple who wrote these things down and we know his testimony is true. Now, why do we know his testimony is true? Because he was in fact there and he wrote those things down. Does you one, know? One, one, one second. If you go to church history, for example, there's a, there's a church father called Saint Irenaeus, okay? Now, Saint Irenaeus wrote many words. You can buy his books today. They're still, they're still able to be bought, okay? Saint Irenaeus said, okay, that Matthew wrote Matthew, Luke wrote Luke, John wrote John, Mark wrote Mark, okay? Now, who was Irenaeus? Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp. Polycarp was a disciple of John. John was a disciple of Jesus Christ. So Irenaeus is only two people away yeah, from Jesus Christ and he confirms that John, the disciple of Jesus, wrote John. How would he know this? He would know it through Polycarp. Okay? Polycarp taught him. John taught Polycarp. Polycarp taught Irenaeus. Irenaeus wrote the authorship down. Okay? In a similar way you'd have your hadiths. Okay? Do you believe when I write the book? One, 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 one Do you second. believe when I write the book? Do I believe when you write the book? Yeah. Explain that. Do you believe when I write the book? Because it depends. Depends where you're coming from. Yeah? I'm not sure you're making a lot of sense. You, you said these people are writing a book, right? Yeah. yeah. This book, how do you know it's right or wrong? How do you know whether it's right or wrong? Okay. Yeah, how so, do you know it's uh, right uh, or wrong? Okay, okay. Now let's, let, let's just take that same standard, okay? I will, I will answer that, okay? But let's say if I just said the same thing to you, how do you know it's right or wrong? Who wrote the Quran? We could both use that question. It probably doesn't go anywhere. That's why I'm saying to study an individual in history, whether it's Jesus, whether it's Muhammad, if we want to study Muhammad, we should look at the Quran and we should look at the Hadith because they are the earliest sources of Muhammad. If we want to study Jesus, we have to look at the New Testament epistles and we have to look at the Gospels, okay? I mean, for example, Peter, the disciple of Christ, wrote, 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 he wrote epistles, he wrote his own writings that are in, okay. our, that are in our books. Okay, me, he says me. Jesus was crucified, he says Jesus was God, he knew Jesus. Okay, 
let me tell you the Quran is, is, is the right religion. Let me tell you, yeah. The, the, the reason I'm telling you the Quran, the Quran is the right religion, yeah, is the, is the right religion and the right Quran and, and coming from the God. Go ahead, tell me. That's the, let me tell you the reason. The reason is no Muslim cannot believe in Jesus Christ, yeah. No Muslim cannot believe in Jesus Christ. All the Muslims that believe in Jesus Christ are the prophet. If Muslim, he said, I don't believe in Jesus Christ, he's not Muslim. How does that prove the Quran no, is right? It is in the Quran, it is in the Quran. Know, minute, let me, how let me, does that prove the Quran is true? It is, because let me finish it, yeah? Because I'm telling you, because I believe in Jesus. But let's one minute, one, one minute, I believe let, all the prophets. Brother, let's take this, let's take this one, argument logically. Like given a, if I said to you, yes, if I said to you, let me, let me if I said to you, you, talk, if, you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're not a Christian, therefore the Bible is true. How does that make sense? Because if you're, if you're a true Christian, if you're a true Christian, yeah, as I mentioned in the Quran, yeah, you have to worship one God. If you're a fake, fake Christian, yeah, if you're a fake Christian and you're telling Jesus the Son of God, that's a fake one. Okay, now how do because, we, now how do we, because again, why, again, how let me finish you, because why? Because Jesus said, I am a prophet, yeah? Where? In the Quran said. Yeah. Where does that come from? Do you know where that comes from? It comes from God. No, 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 hold on. That writing you're quoting, yeah? You're quoting the, uh, the infancy, yes? When Jesus speaks from the cradle and says, I am a prophet of God, yes? Yeah. That does say that in the Quran. Jesus says from the cradle, I am a prophet of God, okay? Yeah. But your, your problem is, all due respect, yeah? Is that, right, that, that, that very writing, that very saying of Jesus, is not authentic to the Quran. That's a writing that predates the Quran. That's in an infancy uh, account of Jesus, yeah? Which is at a New Testament apocryphal work which is too late to be considered authentic, okay? But in the original of that passage, it says, okay, in the original, it says that Jesus is in the, in the cradle and he says, I am the son of God. Now in the Quran, those words are changed from son of God to prophet of God. The now, original, I, now I would say- The original no, book one, of Christian, Jesus no, never says son of God. I would, I would, say, I would, say, I would say, I would agree with, with Ibn Hisham, okay? Now Ibn Hisham is a very early biography of Muhammad, okay? And Ibn Hisham says that for the prophet Muhammad, he would sit at the Mountain of Mawa, okay? and he would sit with a Christian with resources which the Christian would teach the Prophet, okay? That's in Ibn Hisham's biography. And we know that some Christians in that day would have accepted some New Testament apocrypha which actual Orthodox Christians do not accept, okay? And it's funny that Muhammad was learning from such a person and then such writings find their way into the Quran with the message changed slightly. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to let you have the last word. I want you to think about the things I've said. Okay, okay? Let me the one second, I'm going to let you all have the last word, okay? Yeah. But I want you to think about the things I've said. I'll show you how the how the, uh, the salvation in Islam is arbitrary and contradictory. I've shown you how these attributes match up in Christianity in the concept of the cross. It lines up perfectly with the attributes of God. I've shown you now that from the Quran, these verses you're quoting are actually borrowed from other places, okay? And put into the Quran and twisted and changed to suit your prophet's agenda, okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to leave that there. I want you to go away and think about these things, okay? And I'm going to be here next week. Okay, if okay. you have an answer, come back and find me. I've got an answer now, simple. I, I, one second. I'll one second. I'll, one second. I will let you have the last word now, okay? Because yeah. I want to the go last, to, okay. I want to go to the toilet. So okay, the last, last word words. is... Oh, the, the last word is Muslim people, the Quran. All the prophets are mentioned in the Quran. All the prophets. But in Christianity, does not mention Muhammad in the Quran. That's what in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Christian books, right? Does not mention all prophets. Does not mention, right? Yeah? If your book does not mention all the prophets in your Christian book, does not mention all the prophets, that's a fake book. If the Quran is mentioned, all the prophets in the Quran and the, and the belief in Jesus, that's the right one. It's simple. Thanks for the conversation. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Muhammad. Muhammad, I'm Ben. Okay. Thanks, thanks for your conversation. Thank you thanks for your time. God bless. Right. Take care. Okay.